So what I need to do now is actually, I need to figure out what the uh, backlash is. You don't want to make it too thin because you do want to see the pattern. Well, howdy there, I'm Fisherman John. We want to be between eight and 15 as a spec. This is actually going to go up for auction soon. We hit a bit of a snag, literally. and welcome to Gearhead 704. I'm Matt and we are continuing our series of videos on rebuilding my SSP 8.8 rear end. I'm pretty excited today. I think this is gonna be the final video on this series. I am at Fox Mustang Restoration, in case you didn't know. <laughs> and uh, Matt here is one of the owners. He is helping me uh, figure out what how to rebuild this rear end. And so today, pretty much, um, if you haven't seen the other videos, I'll have a link to them down in the description below. I actually have a playlist of that. But yeah, so far we've uh, torn it down. We've gone ahead and replaced all the seals. We rebuilt the carrier. I have new uh, gears in it. I have 355 ring gears. And the last thing we really need to do today is get the carrier or the diff unit actually in the rear end in the housing and close up the housing. I uh, gotta get the axles in of course, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Not too many steps today. I'm hoping this one goes very quickly so that as soon as this is done, I can go ahead and get the rear end back in the SSP and get the SSP over here where we're gonna do a ton of stuff to it. We're looking at doing the interior. Uh, it's going to do paint. I got to do drivetrain. So it's going to be a full rebuild and you get to see it all here on the channel. So if you're not subscribed already, definitely you want to do that so you can catch those videos. I do upload tw two times a week, every Sunday and Wednesday. So yeah, you can count on that. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this build today. All right, guys. So the rear end is still out of the car. I've got it uh, set up right here on these jack stands. Uh, so what I need to do now is actually, I need to figure out what the uh, backlash is. And so I'm starting by getting the carrier in here and I need to put some shims on both sides. I'm gonna start with, um, I think it's a 273 over here. I'll figure it out and let you guys know exactly. And then on this side, I just wanna make sure that it's snug, snug enough to just get it in there. Then I'll measure and figure out what shim size I actually need. But that's how I'm gonna start it out here. All right, guys, like I said, I got to figure out which shim goes in there. I don't know if you can see, but I actually, these are the original Ford racing shims. So it's just one piece. It's one solid piece. What actually comes with a kit are these thick shims you have to typically stick together. And you've got these thinner ones as well when you're measuring to make the right size. So most likely I'm not going to use these. I might, but these are actually mats here. Uh, but yeah, so I actually measured these with a micrometer and that's what I've written down here. We're going to start with the 265 on the uh, ring gear side, and then I'll figure out the other side. Okay, on this side, I uh, went with that 265, uh, and that fit just fine there. And on this, I tried several different shims. What we ended up with was a 261. So um, what I've got to do now is I've actually got to get the bearing caps back down. That's 77 foot pounds and uh, I'll do that. And then I'll actually go ahead and measure the backlash once I've got those caps down. It's like, that's a perfect 18 yeah. right there. You see that? So we're too much. It needs to be 12 to 15 is what we're really right. looking for. Right, so I would say 12 to 15, I would want to get closer to the 12. I would try to adjust, yeah, try to get it adjusted in uh, five or six because what we figure out to be five or six yeah. may not be exactly five or six. Okay. So this is where you got to play with it a little bit. So right now the ring gear is too far this way so we have play. We want to move it in okay. to reduce the amount of play. All right. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add some shim here. We're going to take out here. But we do have a chart to go by depending on how much we need to move it in. Yep. It'll tell us how much we need to increase this shim size. All right. So I'll go get that chart real quick and then that'll let us know where to go from there. All right. So as you heard Matt explaining there, we actually need to move the ring gear uh, closer this way. And so uh, we need to increase our shim size on this side. Right now I've got a 265 over here. Uh, we need to go, according to the specs, about eight thousandths. So uh, we need to get a 273 over here. And on this side, um, I have a 261, so I have to deduct 8,000. So I'm gonna go to a 253. 
So what I've got to do now, undo the caps again, take them out and then replace these shims with the right sizes. So yes, that was another Fox body. Uh, Matt actually does engine diagnosis, electrical diagnosis. So that's one of the things that he is figuring out. That car came in, it wasn't starting correctly. And so he's figuring that out. So if you didn't know, Fox Mustang Restoration does do that. So if you're having start problems or any electrical problems, go ahead and bring it over here and Matt will check it out for you. So I got the tool here to measure uh, my backlashes. We want to be between eight and 15 as a spec. There we go, now I got it zeroed. All right, you can see we're about nine and a half right there. So that is not bad, that is within the spec. So if you can see, the actual uh, preferred is to be 12 to 15, we're at nine and a half, but within the spec, backlash between ring gear and pinion is actually uh, 0.008 to 0.015. We're at nine and a half. Uh, I'd like to get a little closer, more like a 10 and a half. So we gotta do math. It's math, math time, folks. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get my buddy, Fisherman John, and he's gonna help us out with this. Well, howdy there, I'm Fisherman John, and this is my first time on Gearhead 704. When I'm not fishing, I like to teach math at school, so we're gonna go over some math today. As Matt was telling you, the shim sizes were a little off, so we need to get a better reading. We're trying to move that ring gear away further from the pinion. So if you remember, our shim size on that side was 273. Now, we actually wanna move it a little further away from the pinion, so we're gonna deduct two thousandths, which gives us 271. Why, you might ask? Well, if we look at this sheet here, for the backlash to add one, which is we're trying to get that 10 and a half reading, we're gonna back it up two thousandths. So, that's our 271. And then we're actually gonna go ahead and add six thousandths for our preload. So that'll give us a number of 277. Now, we're taking away two from this side. We've got to add two to the other side. We were at a 252. That's going to put us up to a 254. Got to add your preload. Man, this table's hot outside in the sun. All right, and that gives you with a 260. That should give us a reading that's a little closer. We were about nine and a half, like I said. We're adding 0 .001, should be about 10 and a half in our backlash, which is a lot closer to where we wanna be. It's kinda in the middle. Again, you can go eight to 15, but we're gonna be around 10 and a half, we think. We're definitely gonna measure, cause you always gotta measure when you're messing around with math. Math is measuring. Y'all just remember that. Math is measuring, yeah, that's it, that's right. All right, guys, that was uh, Fisherman John. Let me know if you want to see more of him. I don't know if he'll ever show up again, but he was kind of a funny guy, I thought, anyway. Uh, yeah, so what he was saying here is we've actually, we had to change our sim size a little bit. We are trying to get this ring gear a little further away from the pinion. So uh, we're going to end up with a 277 on this side here. And on this side, I'm actually going to be able to use the original uh, Ford one, which is neat. I don't have to combine the shims. On this side, I've got the shims measured out to a 260. So it's a preload, I'm gonna have to knock it in. I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you guys. All right, so I knocked this shim in. I went ahead and just set this side first. Uh, so I got my races in, shims in. Gotta put my bearing caps back on again today. 77 foot pounds, in case you didn't know that for like the 14th time. And uh, once that's done, We'll have to check and make sure we've got a good reading here, but if we're good, we're getting really close to buttoning this up, guys. All 
right guys, we got the measurement we wanted that time. We actually came in at 11, so I don't have to unbolt this again. Yeah, we're in good shape now. So next step is uh, I do want to put the uh, check actually where we're wearing at in the ring gear. There's a special compound we can put down to make sure it's wearing correctly. So I think that's what we're gonna do next. All right, but before I use the marking compound to double check everything's good, there was from the first video when I was rebuilding this, I uh, broke one of the axle bearings. And so I've actually got to put that back in along with the axle seal. It's on this side right here. And uh, I never did put a new one of those in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If you want full details on you know, how to do that, definitely check the other video because I'm just gonna time lapse it. But the big thing to remember is you don't want to knock your axle seal in too far. You want it just past the lip, just past this lip right here. You know, the car in the shop that you guys have seen before is Peaches. This is actually gonna go up for auction soon. It might already be up for auction by the time this video comes up. But Matt's been doing all kinds of work to this. We're gonna to try to get you a full detailed video on it because you've done a ton of work on this car. A ton of work. Yeah. Absolutely. And more to come before it goes up for auction, but the coolest thing about this car is they put roll bars in it. Georgia Highway Patrol. Yep, Georgia, Georgia Highway Patrol, Patrol, which actually. is why it's called Peaches. Yeah, State Patrol. Florida's a highway patrol, I think, right? Exactly. So look for that coming soon, guys. So I'm actually going to take a quick little ride here in Peaches. Very little. <laughs> right, well, let me shoot down the road for a second. Aftermarket radio is an auto, which Matt fully rebuilt. Yeah, I heard this still works. Full overhaul. Check that out. Did you have to fix that, or just, it was just working? No, it's working. Nice. My ashtray doors do not work. 160 mile -hour speedometer. Now, what year is this? Is it 89? No, um, no, later. It has to be later than that. Yeah, it's airbag. Uh, 90. 90. Okay. Yeah, First year of airbags. You replaced that motor. today, right? Yeah, I did cap, rotor, wires, and plug. Okay. Yeah, this actually has the power windows, door locks. Yep. You're telling me you thought maybe this was the captain's car, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. In, in Florida, most of the, uh, pretty much most of the FHPs were um, like all manual, manual locks, manual yeah. windows. Uh, in Florida, if you got one that was uh, all power option, a lot of times that would be like a captain's car or, or okay. like a fire chief. Been a few postal uh, postmaster cars made too. Huh? Oh, really? Yeah. Got into that. All right. Yeah, that tune-up helped a lot. I like that. So. Yeah, this is the same interior as mine. Interior color, blue. Oh, blue. Yeah. Well, I can clear the roll bar. So. <laughs> cool. Ride. AC's working. Yeah, the AC feels good. So guys, I've already talked about what Fox Mustang restoration could do for you today. So might as well plug my own stuff as well. Check this out. I've got a Gearhead 704 sticker as soon as you come in the building here. So I do sell these. I'm gonna have them at uh, Foxtoberfest, so you can definitely grab one if you want. But hey, I'm pretty excited to come in and see my car there. That's pretty neat. So we're gonna check uh, the gear pattern now. Uh, this is the classic paint the gear and spin it over. Yeah, I thought, and, did uh, you already yeah, grab the cop now? Right okay, yeah, that's it. Waist. <clears throat> so, so we gotta check, uh, I think one's Cope, one's Dragon forget the actual names of the surfaces but we're gonna look at the surface of the ring gears we're gonna do this front face this surface facing us first yeah so we're gonna we're gonna paint some material on this surface we're gonna do four or five gears or four or five teeth all beside each other right yeah yeah this way you know it's kind of like uh, redundancy and you want to make sure you uh, you know if one tooth is mismanufactured or a little bit different you could get a false reading it's okay. just always a good way so we got this in the kit yeah this came in the kit the stuff did this is didn't right. come in the kit but basically you don't want to make it too thin because you do want to see the pattern so you want to actually uh, when you get down to the gear met to the gear mesh together you want to actually uh, make them uh, press against each other so you yeah. want to do kind of when you're spinning it you want to have opposite forces 
So right. as it's spit, so as the ring gear spinning this way, you want to kind of resist it. So I'll I'll kind of try to resist oh, it, really? and that All will right. allow the gear to press against each other when you correctly. get down there right, right whenever okay. that gets down there so we're good. feeling pretty good tremendous amount of work because we had the right tools good. but yeah, we'll see I've this had, will tell us i've had good luck so far so hopefully yep. it won't make me a liar here well it wouldn't because i did most of the work on this so <laughs> i just blame it on you yeah pretty all much right, I can work with that. that's what all my viewers do so <laughs> just kidding you guys are great so i'm going to spin this around to where yep, the pinion's moving the and you're the, the painted part is into right, contact right so it's just almost. coming in the contact right so i'm going to resist pressure, it right so i'm re applying pressure uh this way the opposite of rotation and that will allow us to get a good pattern oh yeah you, you see, see where it's wiped away it's yeah exactly so you can see it's pretty centered it goes almost all the way down into the depth of the ring gear and you've got almost full contact across the entire surface of that tube. Yeah, that is full contact. And it's equal. I thought it would just be in the middle, but it's actually almost all the way across. No, now if I didn't give that resistance on there, yeah. it may have been a little bit more just in the middle. Okay. But getting, putting that resistance on there allows you to see the full pattern. And you can see that's pretty much full tooth contact. Yep. So yeah, it's a good pattern. So now we're going to switch around and I'm going to paint the back side and we're going to do the back side. All right, so that time I actually painted the stuff on and uh, I didn't do too good when I was spinning it, but look at this, we're definitely getting full contact. You can see it on this side. Also, you can see it on this side. So it looks like we're in perfect shape. This doesn't have to come off again. Yeah, yeah, these caps get to stay on and uh, the next spot is we gotta get the axles in. Um, and then of course we gotta get the uh, retaining clip, retaining pin in mm -hmm. uh, and the C-clips. All right, the axle slid in. Gotta put my C-clamp in. Downward pressure with your mm -hmm. thumb, and then if you just, oh yeah, you feel it go down. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, then here's this. All right, you too can drop C clips at home. If you pull the axle back out, that goes into the recess in the spider gear, and then the big pin will go through there. And all the pin does is keep the axles from coming back in, so okay. the C clip won't drop out. So that one's in. All right, guys, as I was going to put the last axle in, we hit a bit of a snag, literally. I couldn't get the axle in past the new bearing we installed, uh, the, the bearing I installed today. So um, I'm not gonna be able to finish in this video, unfortunately, and we're so close, we're so close. I need to get a new bearing and a new seal because I already put these in, and uh, that way the bearing will actually be able to allow the axle to get in there. Right now, this axle, it would not go in there. But once that's done, it's just C-clip, C-clip, then I would go ahead and put in, uh, yeah, I've actually got to turn this thing now, but I'll go ahead and put in my retaining pin right there, then silicone around this thing, and put on my diff plate cover. And then I'm essentially done. I mean, I still need to do brakes, but that's how close we are. Unfortunately, I, I don't have the parts with me today, so I got to get a new bearing. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull that bearing again. I'm getting good at pulling bearings. But uh, yeah, so this will be continued in another upload. Um, it'll be really quick, so I don't even know if that'll be the main point of that upload, we'll see. So yeah, sorry, it's just the way it is sometimes, guys. You know, this is real life. But yeah, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Again, this is real life. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're stopping in for the first time or you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, because that helps me out a lot. And uh, we'll see you next time on Gearhead 704.